Yeah. Imagine if the day one they would have killed a million Iraqis. Right. The war would have ended. What America has done in the Middle East to turn it upside down and intervention there, oil here, oil there. Oh, come on. Funding one group against another. What is war? What is about destruction and killing? What rules? What are you There's talking no about? There's no rules. There's no absolute so zero rules. Communism. You mentioned communism. Why are so many atheists, secular people, why do they tend to be more on the left economically? Socialists, communists, they have a, a soft spot for this ideology. Why? If we can say God does not exist and we do not have to derive our morality from God, why do we then turn and say, well, now we need to derive our morality, uh, morality from government? And now government has become the God. No, I don't think that's the problem. I think the issue is that uh, most secularists, and you can see this in the new atheists, do not challenge moral, do not challenge the religious morality. They've accepted religious morality. They just take away God. But they've accepted the idea that is at the heart of Christianity, that the purpose of your life is to serve other people. I saw you made a connection between communism and Christianity, and that Jesus yes. was some sort of communist or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, well, Christ Christianity... I mean, I know a lot of uh, Republicans or conservatives will be jumping out of their seats. How could no. you say, no. Jesus is a communist? That's crazy. Well, first, of course he is. I mean, if you, you're not a communist, but he's, he's definitely on the socialist side spectrum, of it. I mean, yeah. on the spectrum, just read, read some of amount. I mean, you can see it. But that, that's, the point is this. Morality trumps politics. And the moral code that everybody out there accepts is a moral code of sacrifice. Your life is not important. What's important is what you do for other people. And this is Christian. This is a Christian morality. This comes from Christianity. This is why we adore Mother Teresa and hate Bill Gates, even though Bill Gates has helped more poor people than Mother Teresa. I couldn't even imagine. Not even a competition. Right? Not even, yeah. But we love, we, we adore Mother Teresa in the culture. Why? Because she sacrificed, because she suffered, because she gave, because she didn't do anything for herself. Mm. Self-interest is the devil. It's the evil, according to, you know, at the end of the day, according to Christianity. What Marx did is secularize Christianity. What Marx did is saying, you're right. Your life is meaningless. You should sacrifice to that group, but it's, it's not God you should sacrifice. You should sacrifice purely to your fellow man. And your fellow man is equal to you. And every, so what, so what the Christianity yeah, yeah. does is it changes God to the proletarian. Instead of, inst and, and it even has, yeah, yeah. And it, Marxism, and yeah. even, even, even um, they even have their own pope, right? So, so uh, in Christianity, you as an individual don't know the truth. You have to go through a pope in yeah, order yeah. to reveal truth, right? Well, in, 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 co in communism, it's exactly the same. You, as a member of the proletarian, don't know what's good for the proletarian. So you need a dictator, right? And the, and the dictator is the pope. He's the one who communes with the spirit of the Amazing. proletarian. Amazing. And then communicates to you what's good for the proletarian. Your life doesn't matter. Okay. What matters is the proletarian. And you need to do whatever it takes to make the proletarian better off, including die, if that's, if that's what it means, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and this is the point of all moral systems that exist today, except objectivism, really. Right. Your life doesn't matter as an individual. What matters is the life of the group okay. of God. And, and therefore, communism is palatable. What's wrong with communism? You, you, you're just living for the sake of other people. You're sacrificing for the sake of other people. Didn't my mother teach us that you have to think of other people first and never think of yourself and don't be too selfish and don't be too self-interested? Of course, we've all grown up with socialism in our mother's milk. We can't challenge it. And that's what Ayn Rand does. She challenges Amazing. it for the first time. Okay. I find your views on foreign policy and war probably the most controversial. And they're, just, they're just direct consequences so, of my views on everything else. So could I quote you? I think this is a, 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 a near about quote. You can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, where have you gone? Oh, now I've lost the quote. But you were saying that um, when you were fighting in a war, this whole just war theory, you are completely against that. Absolutely. And you say that if we need to, again, correct me if I'm wrong, if we need to kill innocent civilians in the process, then so be it. We yep. should not limit our military uh, action because some innocent civilians die. We need to crush our enemy at all costs. Yes. Come what may. Yeah, assuming the wars are worth self-defense, assuming you were attacked first. So let's say Mexico attacked the United States. Hmm. Then anybody who dies in the war between Mexico and the United States is, is, is the responsibility of the Mexican government. They initiate it first. If a criminal, if a criminal comes and he, and, he, and he shoots you, and, I, you know, and I'm shooting back and by accident I kill a bunch of innocent bystanders, is it my fault or is it his fault? Hmm. It's clearly morally his responsibility for initiating force. And the same thing is true of a government. If a government initiates force against right. me, 
then the only responsibility, let's say the American government, the only responsibility of the American government in defending itself is to defend itself. It, and what does it mean to defend itself? To defend the lives and property of Americans. It has no concerns with the life and property of Mexicans. That is the concern of the Mexican government. Right. Now, it should accept, you know, this goes to immigration, it accept anybody who wants to come into America and avoid the war. But those who stay are now at war with you, are trying to kill you, are trying to destroy you, and you have to do whatever's necessary not to defeat them. It would be complete altruism, a complete negation of self-interest to okay. say, so, I'm not going to harm those people because they're women and children or whatever, but I'm going to sacrifice 10 of my troops in order not to harm them. Why? My only job as a government is to okay. protect my troops. So let, let me uh, counter that with an example. So let's say me and you get into a boxing match, yeah. right? We both have gloves with, and then out of nowhere, you kick me. Yep. Now that's not in the rules yeah. of boxing. Yeah. So I'm saying the same way there's a war. Yes, you have to defend yourself yeah. throughout war, but there are certain rules even within the war that a military should not you know, break. That to me is insanity. So, uh, I mean, war is about, what is war? What's about destruction and killing? What rules? What are you There's talking no about? rules. There are no absolutely so zero rules. Nuclear, chemical, kids, children, Look, bombing a church, for I'm not example. Advocating for killing children. <laughs> but, but absolutely. You do. I mean, there's only one principle in war. Win quickly with minimal casualties to your own side. I mean, I consider Hiroshima and Nagasaki two new, uh, dropping mm. the nuclear bombs heroic acts of Truman. They saved hundreds of thousands of American lives, probably saved millions of Japanese lives. But Truman. How so? Well, because it prevented an invasion of Japan, right? Japan collapsed and, and surrendered and it was all over. I, I mean... So, what, so ideally one swift blow and game over absolutely. as opposed to a prolonged... Absolutely. If, if, you know, and, and I would bet you that most of the wars that exist today from, from the, the prolonged wars like Vietnam or even the Iraq and Afghanistan Iraq, war, Afghanistan, if, the if they had gone in and crushed the enemy and made a statement we will crush you. We will do whatever is necessary to pacify you. We will not. Now, I'm not advocating for those wars. I think they were mistaken wars. Hmm. But if you go to war, then that's what you should do. You have to win, and you have to win quickly. Look how many hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have died. Well, um, I think over a million actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of Iraqis have died yeah. because of this prolonged. Imagine if on day one they killed them. I mean, I'm not advocating for this. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. imagine if the day one they would have killed a million Iraqis. Right. The war would have ended. Iraqis would not want to wanted to fight. Nobody would want to touch the Americans. They would be petrified, and it would be over. But you would, everybody would say that is the most horrific act in all of human history. Yeah. Well, a million have died. More than a million. Well, no, and then it's over over a long period of time. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. But if it had been in one day, everybody would have cared, as if time matters. But surely that's the uh, magnitude. <laughs> I mean, the, the the magnitude of the attack. And the sort of indiscriminate. I nature. don't believe you need to kill a million people. I'm not no, advocating I know, for that I know, or I know. anything. Or let's say I'm half just a million, saying. Or like 20, I'm just 000. saying if you had done something, but but they die anyway, and more die as a consequence. So if you care about human life, you want to get it over with quickly okay. and get it over. So, with. so 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 many people. Now who, again, assuming the war is a war of self-defense. Yeah, assuming, yeah, assuming all those what, things. What you're yeah, yeah. doing is a just war. Just war in the sense that you're acting, you're acting in the cause of justice. So not in executing the war, but in the cause. Yeah, sure. So many people who watch my channel are from a Middle Eastern background, Muslim background, and they may have sympathy with sort of like objectivism, skepticism, yeah. atheism, all the rest of it. But if I want to sell them the American dream, they're like, well, what America has done in the Middle East to turn it upside down and intervention there, oil here, oil there. Oh, come on. Funding one group against another. Sure, I'm not going to defend America. I mean, so, I'm not going to defend America's policy in the Middle East, but the Middle East was messed up and screwed oh, up and I would disaster say it's not, well before has America it helped? showed up. No, I, I, I completely agree. But has it helped? Yeah, I think, it's, I, th I think life in certain countries in the Middle East is better because of American intervention. Right. But overall, no, America's done a disaster job. Why has it done a disaster job? Because it appeases everybody. It it, 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 it it doesn't assert itself. It doesn't assert its values. I think why it's is America why many it? times? Never. Invasions are... Uh, never. Never. Never asserted itself. i give you an example. Okay, okay so you go into Iraq. Yep. You, can't, you take Iraq. And now, what would it mean to assert yourself in Iraq? What it means to assert itself is like what well, we asserted ourselves in Japan. You know who wrote the Japanese constitution that they still live by? Who? General MacArthur. Right. He literally sat down, his, the Japanese wrote a constitution, he looked at it and he said, this is crap, and he shredded it. Right. He sat down at his desk with his assistant, this is a true story, mm. and he wrote a constitution, and he said, this is what you're going to live by. 
this is your constitution. What did the Americans do in Iraq? They brought a committee of tribal leaders, who, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and religious leaders and, and, and all kind of, and they wrote a constitution that's just an unmitigated disaster. What you'd expect mm. that a group of tribalists would write as a constitution. So what do you get? You get a mess in Iraq. You get a complete disaster. Playing devil's advocate, is their country, surely they have a right to decide what their constitution says? Nobody has a right to enslave your own people. You don't have a right to violate other people's rights. I don't care if it's your own country or not. You, you know, you, you, would you say, oh, Americans had a right to slavery. It was their own country. Mm -hmm. So they enslaved some people. Who cares? No. And, and now, that is true of slavery, but it's also true of... of, of uh, of laws, let's say, that discriminate against Shiites, or discriminate against Sunnis, or discriminate against Kurds women, or discriminate against uh, atheists. Is it okay to discriminate against atheists, or discriminate against Christians? Or dis no, none of those things are right. And even if you vote for them, they're not right. Even if the entire country thinks they're right, they're not right. This is why there is such thing as objective truth. You want a successful country? There's a formula. It's called the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. It's called the American Constitution. These are formulas. They're not perfect. You could rewrite them, but that's the formula. That's a general formula. If Iraq wants to be a successful country, you've got to adopt the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution in spirit, if not in, 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 in exactness. And that is true of every Middle Eastern country. To the extent that they don't do that, they will be disasters. And even if people like the disaster, they don't have a right to have mm. the disaster. They don't have a right to discriminate against the individuals who reject it. What about the atheists in Iraq who, who, who don't want this constitution because it's all about religion, it's all about Sharia? Hmm. Okay, fair enough, that's, inter that's interesting. But that I'm saying is very hard. Groups don't have rights. Individuals only individuals yes, have yes, rights. I agree with you. And the only purpose of government is to protect those rights and to the extent that America goes into a country, the only purpose of going into that country should be, should be, to bring them freedom. So do you think and, and by, by letting the Iraqis write their own yeah. constitution, they didn't allow them to establish freedom. So it was a complete failure and complete disaster. So would you withdraw like troops from Saudi Arabia and other parts in the Middle East today or whenever? What, what, what difference does that make? I mean, you said time doesn't make a difference, right? So, so I would do, I would do, I would do two things. So you know, so this is where a lot of people hate my guts. Um, I believe we're at war. You know, have been a war um, with with Islamism, um, jihadism, whatever you want to call it, since 1979. Uh, exactly 30 years ago. 30 years or 40 years ago? Yeah. I can't do math anymore. 40 years ago. Yeah. Um, when uh, when uh, the, embassy, the American embassy was taken, which is an act of war, and uh, when I think the Islamist movement in its current form was really launched. I mean, it, it, it is a Muslim Brotherhood that goes even further to the 1920s, mm. and there's Wahhabism that goes back to the 18th century. But in its modern form, <coughs> the Islamist movement was really formed in, in 1979. Even the, even the Sunnis um, uh, mm. were inspired by the Iranian revolution. Yes, they were. Now, to me, Iran is the key country. Iran and Saudi Arabia are the two countries that fund all the terrorism whether they do it as government policy or whether they do it through charities or whether they do it through other ways, they're the other countries that do it. So in my view, America has to take care of business uh, first and then withdraw from the Middle East. I, I, not mm -hmm. just from the Middle East, by the way. The, the, the American troops in 120 oh, yes, different yes, countries. Yes, yes, yes. I would withdraw them from South Korea. Let, South Korea is a rich country. They can defend themselves. Mm -hmm. I would withdraw them from Japan. Let Japan defend itself. I would withdraw them from everywhere. Germany as well. Certainly, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, who are they defending against? The Russians? Let the Germans fight the Russians. Americans shouldn't have to fight the Russians. So, I, I would withdraw American troops from all these countries, but before I do that, this is where, you know, so libertarians all agree which war, which war yeah. But I believe before that you have to take care of business. Take care of business means two regime changes, in Saudi Arabia and in Iran. Now, in Iran it's more difficult because the regime there is more entrenched, so you might have to use military force. But they have a, a nuclear weapon that they're developing as well. So if well another a, reason to, yeah. to change the regime there and to make clear that, that to that regime, the new regime that comes about, that they better behave themselves, otherwise, you know, but this they is will the, come back. But this is these sort of American policemen, and this is true. No, it's not policemen. If you don't, if you, if, 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 um, if these countries attack each other, if Iran fights with Iraq, America should stay out of it. If, uh, if Pakistan and India want to get at it, America should stay out of it. Even if it's a nuclear and it could affect 
Well, if it affects American citizens, American American property, if it has, then America should get involved. Okay. But is, but the role of America is not to be the policeman of the world. Right. See, you want them to be a policeman of the world when it's convenient for you. No, and, you don't, <laughs> and you don't want them to be policemen of the world when it's not convenient for you. That's what conservatives and everybody else right. wants. Okay. I don't want them to be policemen of the world except in one sense. Hmm. They need to protect. So the United States should have this, the, the fleets in the Arabian Sea and all around that region to protect the, 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 the shipping lanes so that they can get the oil. And that they can, they can, you know, trade international trade should continue. That is a crucial role for the American military to practice, and it's it's a part of the individual rights of Americans to be able to trade yeah. with whoever they want. They need to re replace the regime in Iran, and they need to replace the regime in Saudi Arabia. The fact that we are allies of a king is disgusting and despicable. We shouldn't have an embassy in Saudi Arabia. We should have nothing to do with the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And Would you wipe them out? You wouldn't wipe them out. I don't think you need to wipe them out. You see, everybody thinks that this requires wiping people out. All you have to do to the Saudis is go, boo. I mean, what do the Saudis have? Right. Nothing. They're a poor country. Yeah. They have nothing. They have oil. So all you have to do is say, we're not going to protect you anymore. And the Saudis would shut up, right. right? So all you have to do there is challenge them right. and let them know that you will not tolerate. You know, when the Saudis and the Iranians and the rest of uh, stole the oil, they stole it from Western oil companies. But it's in their country, right? I mean, it's, it's their, it's their there oil. is no such thing as their country, in that sense. But the same way when you attack America, we're attacking an Ameri like the country of America. America is specific people with specific property rights. So why isn't Saudi the whose property rights were, 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 Whose property rights were violated by oil companies in Saudi Arabia? G give me the name of the person. Well, I don't know their names. But yeah. yeah, it was the king. Okay. Kings don't have property rights. Kings do not have property rights. Kings are an abomination. There is no, the king doesn't have property rights. So if, if there's a land in Saudi Arabia that nobody owns, and I discover oil on that, who's oil? In Texas. If you discover oil in Texas on your land, whose no oil market. is it? America's? It's your oil. Right. It's, not, it's not America's I'm oil. I'm going to Texas. Okay. What's that? No, no I'm, I'm going to go Texas. In any way, if, if I discover oil on my property in California, I'm in Puerto Rico now, I live in Puerto Rico. If I discover oil on my property, it's my oil. If, 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 if you have a property in Saudi Arabia and you discover oil, it's not the king's, it's not the Saudi state's oil. That's mm. communism for the guy who, mm. who accused me of communism. No, <laughs> capitalism is about private property. If I want to invite people onto my private property, this goes back to immigration. It's my business, it's not the state's business who I invite to my property. And if I discover oil in my property, it's my property, it's none of the state's business what I do with that. That is private property. That's what capitalism means. So there is no such thing as American oil. There's no such thing as American jobs. There's no such thing as American anything. There's individual Americans own things. That's the job of the American state is to protect those property rights. It's to protect my right to bring in as many Mexicans as I want to live on my land as I want. It's to protect my right to the oil that I have in the land so nobody can steal it and thieve it. It's not their oil, it's my oil. And the gotcha. state has to. So the same thing in, in Saudi Arabia. When American oil companies discovered oil in Saudi Arabia, and it was their oil, and then the Saudis stole it from them, the Saudi king stole it from them, that's when America should have, inter should have intervened and said, no, you can't steal our people's stuff.